as many of us know, um, IUIC has made quite the splash over in my borough, Brooklyn. You know, a few weeks ago on a Sunday, they they surrounded the Barclays and quote unquote uh, support of Kyrie Irving. And because of that, they've definitely gotten and garnered more media attention than usual, breaking into some mainstream outlets and uh, some outlets that we're not usually used to seeing them in. So what we're going to uh, one of those outlets is um, a gentleman by the name of Jason Whitlock. And he had um, the good bishop on his channel for an interview. And what we're going to do is we're going to just, you know, look at a couple parts of the interview and, you know, have some some commentary about what we've seen. But before we do that, uh, Dean, you just a general feeling about the overall interview. What are some of your preliminary thoughts? My preliminary thoughts is that he definitely got in all of the U IUIC sound bites that we've ever heard in our life. He, he managed to get all of them in. So it's definitely IUIC greatest hits. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. MJ, your your preliminary thoughts? I don't know. I think he was excited. <laughs> I think uh, Nathaniel was excited to be on. Uh, I mean, I guess on a quote unquote decent platform, um, and you know, it's just really, really weird listening to him how the the changes in pace when he would talk and you know, just running his sentences together and constantly making mouth gestures. I don't think that he was conscious uh, of um, of his his um, camera etiquette <laughs> to, to speak. Just really weird. But uh, like Dinu said, he most definitely uh, threw everything he could at the wall to see if it would stick in terms of uh, Hebrew Israelite jargon. Mm. Good, good. And joining us um, is my good friend, all the way from Arizona. Of course, we're talking about Mr. Vocab Malone. What's going on, sir? What's going on, man? Glad to be here. Good to see y'all. Hey, hey, hey. So I'm asking everyone's preliminary thoughts about the interview. So you came in just in time for your turn. So what are your preliminary thoughts about the video we're about to review? Uh, Nate is trying to be the new Farrakhan. And that he's trying to be the new spokesman for the people. He's trying to be that guy who people may not necessarily sign up to wear purple and gold, but they'll have him on and respect him as a leader and all that. And so uh, I see him trying to make some changes. Now, he's not going to make all the changes, but I see him trying to make some changes to be that guy. Farrakhan's on the way out. Uh, Hebrewism is not centralized. IUIC is the closest thing because other groups don't do the marches in the dog and pony show or they used to be able to like ICGGC, but their leader, Jermaine Grant, is uh, on the other side. So it kind of falls to Nathaniel, you know, and so I see him trying to do that. And so I saw this first kind of round because he was on some other shows, too. Mm hmm. I saw this first little round is okay, here we go. Now he's done this kind of thing before here and there, like um when they go to Western Africa, you know, they'll he'll make rounds with local media. So I've seen him try to do it, but now it's inroads into the US media. Right. I could see imagine imagine two, three years from now you're gonna see Nathaniel on CNN, controversial leader inter, you know, I I could totally see it. I could totally see it. Absolutely. So with that, let's dig into it. I guess we can start at the 30 minute mark. I think that's when the interview really starts. So MJ, if you can. All right. Please share the link, guys. Please share the link. And trying to move away from free speech. If, if that existed back then, I would not be free right now. We'll take a small pause and bring on Bishop Nathaniel from Israel United in Christ. All right, welcome back. Jason Whitlock, host of Fearless. Uh, I think I've 
calm down a little bit and I'm ready to welcome in our guest, Bishop Nathaniel from Israel United in Christ. Uh, Bishop, I just want to thank you uh, for your patience and uh, taking the time uh, to join me and my audience today. I uh, uh, hope you're having a great Tuesday and I hope we have a great conversation. I plan to, we're going to have a great conversation. So let me just start here with my just my first question or thought that ran through my mind. How many guys did y'all get to show up at the Barclays Center to uh, support Kyrie Irving? And, and how did you pull that off? Well, Thank you for having me. Uh, never bring out, even uh, when David numbered Israel with him. Um, it's numbering chopping up a little bit, MJ. Can you start, start you know, Many of our enemies are waiting to see how many numbers we have. Let's just say it was a lot. Yeah, because you definitely need to hear that first thing he says because mm -hmm. it's totally cheesy. Mm -hmm. uh, and telling and uh it wasn't broken up in the original interview so that must have been on the other side of things yeah one more time mj to uh support kyrie irving and and how did you pull that off well thank you for having me jason i do appreciate it all praises to the most high uh any military man knows you never bring out your numbers even uh when king david numbered israel the lord got mad with him about numbering the children of Israel. We're not to do that. And our, our many of our enemies are waiting to see how many numbers we have. Let's just say it was a lot. <laughs> so like it, I said, it, it certainly was a lot. It was, I heard reporters say 100, 200 people. And I'm like, well, now I wasn't that good at math, but I certainly see more than 100 and 200 people oh, yes. well, out here. You could, you could pause it right that, there. Well, it's a lot more. I just, you could pause it right there. <laughs> I know I got something to say about this vocab. Look, you're chopping at the bit. Yeah. Forget. <laughs> I'm not yeah. going to say, but uh, <laughs> I think it was more than 200. Oh, yes. Multiply that. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, th these guys, you know, like he's a like he's a general, you know, like he's a he's a general in a war and never reveals his numbers, you know. But IUIC will always talk about their great success and uh, what they're doing, you know, in other contexts. I think uh, the idea is let the media, let Jason Whitlock overestimate. Because that he does that several times, I think in this interview, it's like right. let him overestimate. I think that's the real wisdom there. But you know, I'm like, just be straight. You know, if I did a march and I had people, I'd say we got this many people. I don't know, just just be straight. These guys, these guys are so unstraight. You know, with their answers, like. <laughs> uh, no, and you know, crazy. when he said, "How'd you pull it off?" He didn't answer that question. It should have been, "Well, I'm the leader of a cult," and see, we, <laughs> you know, because <that>, <laughs> he and said, when "I say goals." And yeah, basically, right. <laughs> King David, wait, King of Israel. Sorry, Masha was king. I'm sorry. Uh, not, not. Uh, uh, which one was? Which one is not Arya? Man, the, is his, it Masha? Masha, Masha. Masha. Did yeah. I just say Masha? Masha. And, yeah. and, and unsay it. What's wrong with me? Masha's King David. So the title's already taken. But go ahead. Yeah. Well, you know. So of course he's referring to um, First Chronicles twenty one one, which says, "Then Satan stood against Israel and incited David to number Israel." This wasn't a matter of bad military strategy. That's not what this scripture that he referred to was about, right? It's about actually Exodus 30, verse 12. When you take the census of the people of Israel, then each shall give a ransom for its life to the Lord. When you number them, that there be no plague among them when you number them, right? So th it's not just numbering them. There's, there's a, a whole ritual in which they ransomed themselves to Yahweh. And in the Enduring Word Bible Commentary, it says the principle of Exodus 30, 12 speaks to God's ownership of his people. In the thinking of these ancient cultures, a man only had the right to count or number what belonged to him. Israel didn't belong to David. Israel belonged to God. It was up to the Lord to command accounting. And if David counted, he should only do it at God's command and receiving ransom money to atone for the county. So David didn't do any of that. God didn't tell him to do it. And that's why he suffered the consequences. It wasn't bad military etiquette, as the good bishop would like to try to make it seem like. So already we're on shaky ground with this guy when it comes to representing scriptures properly. If you had to guess how many of them were, were planning to come, a thousand? I, I would say thousands. 
I would say thousands, thousands. You see black hats and black coats with dandruff everywhere. <laughs> Uh, oh, Bishop, we we don't have to be disrespectful. I'm sorry. Uh, we don't, See, we don't have to take any pot shots. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't have to take any pot shots. Uh, okay. th that that's that's interesting. So if there's a thousand, two thousand of them, but they look and see like, oh, we're outnumbered, that means at least I can speculate there was probably there was at least more than two thousand of you all. At least. <laughs> <laughs> So no, let, let me take a step so back. He's claiming, just so everyone knows, me, he's claiming there's 2,000 out there. Okay, at least 2,000. That's So you don't give a numbers, but he's saying there's at least 2,000. Now, I don't know. But I'm just saying, um, if it's only in the tri-state area, that makes me wonder. Because they had a little under 10,000 at their Detroit annual march. That's their big one with all their men. So having 2,000 just in the tri-state area, I don't know if that sounds right. Because Detroit just happened in July. You know what I mean? 